There are quite a lot of people on my personal Twitter timeline arguing about anime piracy. The drama stuff is better reserved for my regular streams at Friday 6pm Eastern, subscribe if you don't want to miss them. I don't want to get to the petty nonsense of the video because there's a bit of a more serious topic to talk about, and that's in regards to anime piracy and whether or not it's impacting the anime industry in general. Before we get to this video, thank you all so much for supporting this channel, you can do so by checking the links down below. Let's start off with the most basic question, why do people pirate not just anime but films or TV series in general. There are many reasons for people to pirate. I for one pirate because there really aren't a lot of ways for me to watch the animes that I want to watch. The streaming websites that are available in my country, Indonesia, do not host animes like Monster or Welcome to the NHK or Oran High School Host Club. In order for me to watch those animes, I have to get it from other unsafe means. But that doesn't mean that I don't spend money on anime related things. I still buy video games, I still buy movie tickets and go see films if they're released here, I recently saw her blue sky in the theaters. I don't get that anime to be honest. But Anthem of the Hearts is still amazing, go watch that one. I still buy merchandise of anime or video game things that I like, or at least the costumes that I like, maybe not so much the anime. Now I've already talked about the issues of piracy and how streaming services, legal hooplas, and corporate greed in general can only contribute to more people sailing the high seas. I've also talked about anime piracy and how we are not the people that the anime market in general are trying to appeal to, and how the lack of actually good digital distribution services only contribute more and more into the piracy of anime. But let's elaborate on those two videos a little bit more, this time with actual data. There was a study done about anime piracy released in 2011 coming from an economic think tank of the Japanese government. The Japanese Research Institute of Economy, Trade and Industry has published an elaborate study that examined the effects of piracy on sales and rentals of Japanese anime DVDs. Despite the anime being on YouTube or other peer-to-peer -peer sharing networks, it appears appears to help raise DVD sales. YouTube can even be interpreted as a promotional tool for DVD sales. Now there are definitely other variables that might contribute into the higher sales of DVDs at the time, but there's not a lot of evidence to support the notion that piracy hurts the anime industry. But that's still very old, so here's some 2019 stats. According to the Association of Japanese Animators, the Japanese anime industry, despite all of the piracy happening left and right, is earning more money than ever, and almost half of it is from outside of Japan. While physical home video sales decline, video streaming revenue continue to rise to the point where there is more revenue compared to the physical video sales. Revenue from overseas cracked the 1 trillion yen mark, which is roughly around 9.5 6 billion dollars. There you go, Appa. You're wrong. The international market actually do contribute into a good portion of the anime industry sales. Not only that it's almost half, but a lot of it also comes from streaming. Therefore, the best way for us to support the industry is to spend our hard-earned money to digital distribution websites that constantly censors animes overseas. But at least they help the anime industry, right? Now hold that thought for a moment there. I haven't mentioned a couple of facts that you also need to know. The things that contribute to that 46% of revenue doesn't primarily come from streaming. Rather, it mostly comes from overseas theatrical screening and anime-related video game sales. So all that money you spent on Fate Grand Order or Grand Blue Fantasy or that new 7 Deadly Sins game that always pop up in my YouTube ads actually helps this industry a lot more than, say, paying a subscription fee to digital distribution services that showed screenshots of pirated copies in their tweets. Twice. So despite the amount of pirates that have been sailing the high seas internationally, the profit for anime is still rising. And this is all thanks to us spending money on anime related things, including merchandise or gacha games. Anime companies in Japan are like YouTubers. They're gonna branch out and try to get profit from somewhere else. Like me with my donation links down below because YouTube demonetizes all my videos these days. Still, I'm pretty sure that a good portion of these profits come from big budget mainstream animes like your my Hero Academia or Attack on Titan or Fate, they're definitely gonna be able to hold themselves just fine, what with them having so many spin-offs that include movies or even video games. But what about the smaller anime studios that produce lesser known animes? How do they survive without the help of big publishers? Sad to say this, but they usually don't, and there's really nothing much we can do to help their demise, especially if they don't put any effort on distributing these animes overseas. Not a lot of anime studios can afford to produce 
merchandise or video games or any other streams of revenue. Maybe they should do what Studio Trigger did and open up a Patreon. Oh, by the way, Studio Trigger has a Patreon account, did you know that? Regardless, I'm not seeing the impact that piracy would have towards anime, or at least towards the big budget mainstream anime titles. These are the titles that will be mostly enjoyed by normies, as they don't really know how to pirate. They do know how to spend their money on streaming services, because streaming services are a lot easier to process for the normies than having to learn how to torrent, use adblock, have antivirus ready, finding the right copy of the right show, etc. I don't think any of these big budget mainstream anime titles are gonna die because of pirates. To say that piracy will kill these animes is just utterly ridiculous. However, not all animes are your big budget mainstream titles, and this is where supporting them can get a lot trickier, especially with the state of the Japanese anime industry being a really harsh place to work in. And again, not all anime studios can afford to have their products, whether it be animes or films, distributed internationally. We do have animes being distributed internationally, such as the aforementioned mainstream animes, but there are also anime films like Your Name, or Weathering With You, or even anime series like Devilman and Crybaby that got on Netflix. Studio Ghibli is another great example for this. Not a lot of anime films or TV series have the power that Ghibli has. Take it from someone who has worked on many Japanese anime before. Terumi Nishi is an anime director and character designer who has worked on One Piece, Pokemon, and Jojo Part 4. At one point, she aired her complaints on Twitter about the Japanese anime industry because it's usually overworked, there isn't a lot of royalty or revenue sharing for character designers, and despite how high quality Japanese Japanese animations are, they are actually pretty low budget, and that results in the breaking of the minds and the body of a lot of creators around. She did an interview on Otaku Magazine that got deleted for some reason, but it's still insightful nonetheless, and I have the archive version links down below. In the interview, she said that anime fans can help the people in the industry by going into fan events and buying doujins directly from an animator working on your favorite shows. When you do that, the money goes directly to them. Another way you can do it is through supporting them on sites like Pixiv through their fan box, which is kind of like Patreon. You can also support them on Patreon if they're available, but according to her, it's a bit hard to manage because because she has to communicate in English and she doesn't know how to communicate so well with overseas fans. And you know what? She's right. Like I said, the anime industry in general can be a very harsh place, and a lot of workers, including the artists themselves, can be underpaid and overworked to the point of sickness and even death. While we do often hear big companies invest on animes, including companies from overseas, those investments might have mostly gone to the distributors or the companies who produce animes, rather than directly towards the artists or the mangakas or light novel offers who are struggling their hardest to survive in this overly competitive entertainment industry. Knowing that this is a huge issue in the anime industry, the absolute best way for us, the international audiences, to truly support Japanese animation is to directly support the artists who are involved in the making of the anime. If you can't support them financially, just follow their social media and send them words of encouragement, send them your love and appreciation. That actually helps quite a lot, but this also presents a very big issue for the people outside of Japan, and this is the fact that Japanese people in general are not very good at English. And thanks to them not being able to communicate very well in English, they probably don't know or are completely unaware of the methods in which they can receive financial support from the people overseas. If the people overseas know that you worked on big anime releases that they love, or you are the mangaka or the light novel offer of those big animes, they would gladly support you. And if you have the means to financially support yourself, if you have a way for these overseas audiences to donate to you through PayPal, Patreon, Pixiv, etc., they will financially support you. These artists, animators, mangakas, offers, etc., have struggled their hardest and sacrificed their body and soul for these animations to be enjoyed by everyone, and unfortunately, the industry that they're working on might have not compensated them for all of their struggle. Thankfully, the internet can be an amazing place. I say can be because it can also be a horrible place, but this is a time where it can be an amazing place. The the internet is able to provide us so many means of communicating, and most importantly, many means of transactions. We have the ability to support these struggling artists directly. We can provide them all the love and support that they need to get through the industry. All these artists need to do is to actually provide us, the overseas audiences, the means to support them, have them to open up any sorts of donation accounts like PayPal or Ko-fi or Patreon. If they have a Pixif account, let them know where we can donate to them. If 
they have doujins or merch like keychains, t-shirts, plushies, etc. Let them know where we can buy them directly or import them from overseas. And if you can't buy them but you are aware of their social media presence, at least let them know that you love their work and that you are looking forward to see more of their works in the future. In my opinion, doing all of these things will support the anime industry much better than, say, paying a subscription fee to anime digital distribution services that not only frequently screws up the anime but whose profits might have not gone directly to the actual workers who made the anime possible in the first place. To say that we, people outside of Japan, pirating animes made in Japan for Japanese people would hurt the Japanese anime industry is absurd. It's absurd even within the country itself. There are also some really interesting examples too where anime or manga or visual novels that are not distributed through legal means are appreciated by the creators. For example, the creator of Watamote thanked 4chan for spreading the manga through scanlations by referencing Spaghetti in Pockets, a 4chan meme. Then there's the creator of Umineko When They Cry, not only thanking the fan translators of Umineko, but they're also being requested to help translate his next game. Most tokusatsu creators like Toei, who made Kamen Rider, will not release their series in America because it costs a lot of money and they're not gonna be that popular in the mainstream crowds there. So when people are fan subbing them, they just shrug because Let's face it, their shows are basically toy commercials, and these fan subbers are helping them to promote their toys, which is how they get most of the profits. This of course depends on the creators, but personally, if I can't speak English and I make a comic in Indonesian that I sold commercially in Indonesia, and someone from overseas loved it so much that they translated it to English through a fan translation, I would be very happy. That means that more people are aware of my comic, and more people are aware of who I am. And the more people aware of me, the more people who are more likely to support me through many means. You can check them out, links down below. And even if they're straight up scanning my comics and don't translate them, it would be useless for me to fight them, because piracy is one of those things that you just simply cannot win against. It's always going to exist, whether the creators like it or not. So if someone pirated my comic in the same Indonesian language, what I I would do is to go to them and say, hey, I'm glad that you're interested in my comic and reading them and all, but please do support me if you think it's awesome. Here are the links where you can support me, here are the ways for you to buy the comics legally. Trust me, you do not want to fight the pirates. They will always win and you are powerless to stop them. Obviously not everyone is going to be happy when they know that people are stealing your stuff, especially self-published offers and especially independent offers. Now I'm not specifically talking about independent offers in this video. Video, I'm talking about anime in general, but I do want to address them for just one bit. The creator of a boy's love manga named Haisin Young complained to a website named Mangago that her comic is being illegally published there. She said that it made her feel worse and that the result threatens her livelihood. Thanks to this, she became a beggar and that people are even mocking her for complaining about it. Thanks to this, she felt hopeless in drawing them. If we're talking about independent creators like indie game developers or self-published offers, especially especially those who already have their works published through legal means, and especially those who sell their game for a couple of bucks on Steam or something, Please support them if you can. A lot of the power in the entertainment industry comes from independent creators and passionate artists. Support these independent artists and creators. The only case where I would tolerate people pirating their works is if they don't have an official English translation and you can only get them through fan translation. But even then, if you genuinely love their work, do what you can to support the independent. But as I said before, you cannot stop the piracy of these works. They will always exist whether you like it or not. What you can do, however, is to convince these pirates that there are legal ways for them to support you. Give them links to where they can support you. Maybe add an extra page to your comics with all the links to where your readers can support you. Try to understand why they pirate your stuff, and maybe by doing so, you will be able to improve your own methods of distribution. You might be able to learn a thing or two from them. I totally understand why you would hate the pirates, but fighting them is impossible. It's a lost cause. You will lose. And of course, the corporations will get really pissed off if they found out that you pirate and will do whatever it takes to protect their intellectual properties and their revenue. Suburaya, for example, at one point, officially disallows the doujin works of their properties like Gridman. That worked out very well. Do you remember how Atlas have very strict rules of streaming Persona 5? One that they apologize for? They're doing it again for Persona 5 Scramble. 
scramble. Zero lessons learned and this time the rules are even more ridiculous. Square Enix hates fan remakes, or rather fan remakes that will have their own updated re-release anyway, like Final Fantasy Type O, whose fan translator received threats and false accusations. And speaking of fan works, Nintendo. Don't even get me started. So going back to the first question, one of the reasons why people pirate is because the services are terrible, they're less convenient than piracy, they're not available everywhere, and they host significantly less library of things. People air so much criticisms towards a lot of western anime distributors, especially the dubbing scene for censorship or really bad translations, which has happened so many times at this point and very recently that it's not even funny. For a lot of people, this is just not acceptable. And they don't want to put their money on services that butchers the original release. If you're going to provide legal means for people to support the anime industry, at least do a good job at providing that service. Again, if you want to truly support the industry, support the creators directly, buy their doujins, buy their merchandise. If they have a crowdfunding account, if they have a way for you to donate to them, donate to them. If you don't have money, just send them words of encouragement. If they don't have social media, then you can just use your own and promote their works to everybody. You can even use your social media to tell other people to support these creators if it's impossible for you to do so. The absolute least expensive way for you to support the anime industry is to discuss about them. Tell them to read or watch or play their works. Tell more people that you love them and you want more of them. Engage yourself in this hobby. Encourage people to engage themselves more in this hobby. And you don't have to watch the latest trendy anime, just watch the animes that you love or talk about the animes that you love. If you have done all of that, congratulations, you have made the anime industry more alive than ever. There are many other better ways to support the industry and keeping it alive for the next few decades than putting your money for a subscription fee of subpar digital distribution services that constantly ruin these animes. If there's anyone in the world who thinks that this is the only way to support the anime industry, tell them that they're mistaken and don't ever let these people guilt you into supporting them by saying that anime will be dead or anime will be ruined the more people pirate them. No. Anime is only dead when you decided that it's boring to talk about it. Anime is only dead when no one cares about it anymore and no one wants to make them anymore. You don't have to like the latest and trendiest anime, even older animes are still alive to this day if you chose to talk about them and keep them alive in people's memories. The anime industry has its problems, it's been through quite a lot, but pirates are not one of them. They are merely the symptom to the real problem. To quote Game Newell, one of the things that we've learned is that piracy is not a pricing issue, it's a service issue. And the anime industry, especially in the West, have a lot of issues in their services that need fixing.